why don't we just lift our hands to the Almighty God and bless His holy name, give Him glory, give Him honor for a brand new year, worship Him, worship the ancient of days, give Him glory, give Him honor, give Him adoration. Let Him hear your voice as you praise Him, that you have been able to see a new year. Thank you, Father. mighty name we have worshipped. We give you all the glory. We give you honor. We give you all the glory. We give you last year. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your support. Thank you for provision. Thank you for health. Thank you for strength. Thank you for victory. Thank you for your mercy. Father, accept our thanks in Jesus' name. We're here this morning to thank you. Lord God Almighty, as we gather together to thank you, please be present in our midst. And I'm especially committing to your hands all your children who have been faithful throughout last year in the giving of their offerings and in the payment of their tithes. This year, embarrass them with your blessing. Bless them so much that their colleagues will come and say, how are you doing it? And Lord God Almighty, 
in the life of every one of us this year, do something new. Do something glorious. Do something divine. Do something miraculous. Do something wonderful. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. May let someone shout hallelujah. I shake hands with one or two people and say, Happy New Year. God bless you. Well, you may be seated for a while, but you'll probably be standing very soon. I discovered something while I was preparing for the new year. Something that we've not been doing, that we should be doing from now on. And uh, that is, we have not been celebrating. Many a times you wait for people to celebrate you and they don't show up. Uh, I discovered that uh, scripturally speaking, it is good to celebrate yourself. Mm. You know, when, when we were in the primary school, when you do something very good, the teacher will say, clap for yourself. Uh, go ahead, clap for yourself. <laughs> I, I know it will sound strange to you. Initially, it was to me, too, until I can see from the scriptures that we need to celebrate, even if we have to celebrate ourselves. And so, you're going to be helping yourself this morning by visiting two or three people and telling them to celebrate you and tell them, celebrate me, I'm a survivor. I <laughs> just say, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, let me, let, let, let me explain, let me explain, let me explain. <laughs> just hold on, hold on. You know, the elders have a saying, and I'm telling you, next to the Bibles, the next people you should be listening to are the elders. They're very deep in wisdom. They said, the, you know, that uh, lizard with the red head, the red-headed lizard, he jumped down from an Iroko tree when it landed. It nodded his head three times. And the other said, what he was saying is, I tried. If nobody is praising me, I will praise myself. <laughs> now, when, when you say you are a survivor, let your neighbor know. Ebola came, I survived. Coronavirus came, I survived. Kidnappers are out there, I survived. Bandits are out there, I survived. There are murderers wearing police uniform, I survived. 
<laughs> Go ahead, tell three or four people I am a survivor. <laughs> Celebrate me, man. I am a survivor. I survived 2020. I survived 2021. I survived 2022. I am a survivor. Celebrate me. Celebrate me. I am a survivor. Oh. <laughs> All right. Now, it may sound strange to you. Why should I celebrate myself? I discover, <laughs> all right, uh, I think the elders have more reason to celebrate. They survived through this old age. <laughs> Glory be to God. When you go through the book called Genesis chapter 1, then you notice you have a lesson to learn from God. When he finished the work of the first day, because there was nobody around to celebrate it, he looked at everything he had done on the first day and said, this is good. There's nobody to say it to me, so I say it to myself. The second day, this is good. The third day, this is good. The fourth day, this is good. The fifth day, this is good. The sixth day, said, maybe I better create somebody who probably will be celebrating me later on. When he finished mine, he said, now this is very good. And then he took a whole day off to celebrate. Ah, clap for yourself, man. A survival. And you know what? It is not even expensive to celebrate. You don't have to be rich to celebrate. When I graduated in 1967, nobody attended my graduation ceremony except the girl that I finally married. And the same was true of my best friend. And all that people, parents were coming, big cars to come and celebrate with them. Nobody came for my celebration. The same thing with my best friend. The only fellow who came was uh, the girlfriend he too, finally married. And we celebrated. How did we do it? Oh, <laughs> we went to the motor garage. There's one Mama Buka there. Very good. I, those of you who don't go to Buka, you don't know what you are missing. <laughs> those Mama Buka. If you have ever been to Buka, you will never hear anybody say, I need extra salt. Never. Mama Buka can smell when the food is right. The salt is right, the pepper is right, everything is just right. Anyway, my friend and I and our two girlfriends, we branch at the Buka, bought four big wraps of Amala and bought eight pieces of meat. Four of the uh, eight pieces were beef, the other were Mama, original raincoat. We finished the thing, came out and drowned it with a bottle of Coke each. Me, I'm telling you, we celebrated. And, and, and I'm telling you, you can celebrate today just by going out. On our way coming, 
I saw the polycella already there, just a little before the branching to Yaba, uh, no, Jeba, Jeba Street. I looked at it and I said, this is good. First of January. And, and people might be wondering, but if Sela out on the first of January, Kentucky Chicken Restaurant, are they not open today? Life must go on. Go out and celebrate, man. <laughs> you see, for us Christians, Probably because we do not celebrate. That's why we don't praise God enough. Because as you are celebrating, as you are celebrating that we are survival, it will dawn on you that you survived only because somebody was taking care of you. David said in Psalm 18 verse 35, Psalm 18 verse 35, and when you get home, read it all the way to the end. He said, your gentleness has made me great. You know what he said? I am great. Okay? But that greatness came because of God. I am alive today because New every morning is his mercy. Uh, one of my house help, when we have a money devotion and we ask her to pray, she will include in her prayer any time. God, I thank you because not everybody who slept yesterday is awake this morning. There were people who did not survive 2022 because they died on 31st of December. You are here. You survived. No doubt about it. Because somebody is taking care of you. Let me hear somebody shout hallelujah. Paul the Apostle said in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 10, 1 Corinthians 15 verse 10, he said, I am what I am by the grace of God. I am what I am by the grace of God. You see, there are so many things that we don't even think about when it comes to praising God. The other day I was just praying and I remembered one situation. I remember a chief, very wealthy man, and I mean wealthy man. He sat down to eat pandered yam. He took the first muscle and remembered something he wanted to say. He tried to swallow, trying to speak at the same time, and the muscle got stuck in his throat. Before he got to the hospital, he was dead. How many muscles have you been swallowing? And I mean, ask the doctors. They will tell you there is a valve between where the voice is coming from and where the food should go down. And you are eating and talking. And the valve, the valve is going like this, sweeping, sw swinging, Right, left, right, left, so that you can eat and talk and not choke. Somebody in charge. So that's why David said in Psalm 108 verse 1, Psalm 108 verse 1, he said, I will bless the Lord at all times. Then he said, my heart is fixed within me. My heart is fixed within me. I will praise the Lord. Then he went on to say in Psalm 34, from verse 1 to 3, Psalm 34, from verse 1 to 3, he said, I will bless the Lord at all times. His prayer shall continually be in my mouth. I will bless him at all times. 
I'm not going to wait till Thanksgiving Sunday before I bless the Lord. I'm not going to wait till the annual Thanksgiving before I bless the Lord. I bless the Lord at all times. I bless the Lord every day. Why? Because, just like that lady said, it's not everybody who slept who woke up. When I woke up in the morning and I sweat, I said, Ah, oh, glory be to God. Satan, you lose again. Because there are some of us, the devil does not want us to wake up. Because he knows that each time we wake up, there is trouble for him. He knows that if we can just kill this one before the morning, the trouble will be less. And while we are sleeping, and I'm telling you, nobody is powerful when he's sleeping. Only there is somebody who neither sleep nor slumber. Oh, those of you who are high and mighty people, you have bodyguards, etc., etc. <laughs> Let me tell you one thing. If you rely on bodyguards, you are dead. Oh, we have quite a few of them at Redemption Camp. <laughs> and, and I remember uh, one occasion, I think we just finished the convention and everybody was resting and I was going around at night uh, praising God. And uh, I got to one night guard. He was sitting down on the chair and there was a second chair beside him. He was fast asleep. So I sat on the chair next to him, listening to his uh, snoring. But then I think a mosquito was passing by and he wanted to slap the mosquito. He nearly slapped me. <laughs> and I, I went on and I saw another one. This one wasn't even pretending. He removed his shoes, he put two chairs together, and was laying down there and was fast asleep. I just took his uh, torchlight, took it some distance away and left it so that when he wakes up in the morning, he will know he had had a visitor. There is only one fellow who neither sleeps nor slumber. He's never tired. He's watching over you, watching over your children, watching over your business, whatever problems you have tonight so that weeping may endure tonight, the joy may come in the morning, will you shout hallelujah to me? Then David says something. He said, magnify the Lord with me. Let us praise his name together. Now I ask you the question. What is the meaning of magnify? To magnify means make bigger. How can you make bigger someone who is bigger than the biggest? How can you enlarge God? <laughs> we sing a song, we say heaven and earth can contain him. While he's sitting in heaven, He's using the earth as his food too. And yet he said, magnify him, make him bigger. And we all know the secret of uh, juju musician, how they make their money. That is in those days when you used to go to party by the, <laughs> by the street side. As soon as they arrived, they sent their uh, apprentice to go around check the names of the of the big big people. Big people are those who are wearing big clothes, so even though they might have borrowed the clothes. And as soon as they begin to play, they, 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 they zero in on your name, and they begin to call you names, big thing, titles, emergency contractor, uh, this, that. And your head swells. The money you don't want to spend, you spend. 
You want to take the money out of your pocket, something within you will be telling you, hey, you borrowed that money, you say, shut up. When we get home, we shall settle that. When you praise the Almighty God, He says, swells. The Bible says he inhabits the praises of his people. The Bible says he is seeking for those who will worship him in spirit and in truth. When you praise him the way he should be praised, he will leave his throne and pay you a visit. And when he pays you a visit, yokes will be destroyed. Prison doors will be opened. And mighty things will begin to happen. So much so that even your enemies will become your servants. So David now went ahead and concluded with a question. What shall I render? He said, this God who had done so much for me took me from nothing. I am now a king. He is gentleness has made me great Read that passage very well. He talks about how God has handed over his enemies to him. How he could now deal with the enemies whichever way he wanted, etc., etc. He said, what can I render? That should be a question you should ask yourself this morning. God has been good to me. I don't know about you. You may think you are nothing, but there are several people who are jealous of you. There are people who are praying that if only I can become like you, God, I will be satisfied. God has been good. I've told you of a year before, when I, uh, in December I was at the camp, and I, I, was, prepare, I was trying to prepare for uh, the New Year service. I said, Lord, it's just the two of us. You're my daddy, I'm your son. I know I'm your favorite, so I can talk. There's nobody here, just the two of us. I will tell the people to praise you on Sunday. But honestly speaking, I have nothing to thank you for. You didn't do anything for me. So, but I will tell the people to praise you, you know, I will do the job of a pastor. He spoke back to me, and I'm sure God is speaking to somebody today. Mm, somebody who should be more grateful than he or she is. He says, son, is that so? I said, <laughs> that's the truth, the Lord. A whole year passed. I can't think of a single miracle. And I said, uh, take your exercise book. So I took my exercise book. I said, I, I, I just want to ask you some questions. You write it down. He said, uh, January 1 of last year, you slept and you woke up on January 2. I said, yes. Is that a miracle? He said, how many people slept on January 1 and didn't wake up on January 2? Well, there might be some people. And incidentally, just by the end of the year, that year, there was a story of a trailer going to a lorry, got to a bottom, and was about to take a bend and the driver lost control and the trailer hit a house and killed somebody who was sleeping on his bed. That fellow didn't travel, he didn't go anywhere. He was sleeping on the bed and death met him there. Uh, uh, did you wake up on the second? I said yes. He said, can we put that down as one? By the time he has been talking to me for 10 minutes, I was flat on my face. Father, I thank you. Because he asked me, how many times have you traveled and you came back home safely? He said, are you sure every driver 
coming in the opposite direction. How many of them do you know who are on drugs? How many of you know who are demon possessed? How many of you know whose relatives are pursuing to make sure that he won't arrive? How come they didn't branch across the road to you? Do you think it is because you are very clever? That's why you travel every day, you return, you go out, you call me. And I said, I apologize. New every morning is his mercy. It's of the mercy of God that we are not consumed. Because he kept on renewing it every day. You can move your hand. And when he says clap your hand, you can't clap. When David said, when David said, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. <laughs> Do you know the implication of some of the things this fellow said, David, this very grateful fellow? When he said, all that is within me, bless his holy name. Do you know if there's any problem with what is inside of you? It could lead to death. Do you know that there is something within you that they call the voice box? That thing that produces the voice. Do you remember the story of that great a socialite who had a stroke, the kind of stroke that would take away the voice that I said I visited in the UK with a common friend. And it took him 30 minutes to say to us by signs that his wife, who was sitting by his side when we came in, he is coming back again. He took 30 minutes to demonstrate that. Uh, how long does it take you to say glory be to God? <laughs> Do you know there is something within you? Because David said, forget not all his benefits. Do you know there is something that is very, very precious to you that is called memory? Ability to remember. Have you ever seen anybody suffering from memory loss? Nothing can be as painful as that. They won't even recognize their child. They won't, oh God, I decree in the name that's above every other name, you will never lose your memory. And some of you who remember the story I told you before, when I was at Elisha Grammar School in the 1950s, there was a madman sitting always in front of the gate. And any time we wanted to learn serious history, we would buy a keg of pan wine, take it to him. After he has taken two cups, he said, hey, what history do you want to hear? European, American, British? And then you tell him, uh, okay, European history. Uh, all right, from what date to what date? And he will begin. We were the one who would say, okay, we will come back. Because he was a professor of history. And something went wrong. He knows all the history. But when you ask him, what is your name? He can't remember. When were you born? He can't remember. What's your address here? He doesn't know. If I ask you today, what's your name? Can you remember? Yes, if I ask you, when were you born? Can you remember? Yes, if I ask you to stand up, do you know what that means? Yes, if I ask you to shout hallelujah, do you know what that means? Yes, David said, what can I render? That's a mighty question you must ask this year. Because if we don't thank God for 2022, eh, he's waiting to 
T23 had just started. Ignore him for all he did in 2022. You will have him to deal with in 2023. Don't let anybody deceive you. Not everyone who said Happy New Year today will be around in a month's time. But you survived thus far. You can keep on surviving if you know how to say thank you. Do I hear somebody say thank you, Lord? That's why those of you <laughs> who are not born again, you don't even know the danger you are in. Particularly <laughs> in Nigeria of today. And those who came to watch night yesterday, when I was giving them a little bit of the prophecies for the year, and I saw some of them looking at me saying, Daddy, you didn't say anything about Nigeria. I said, in Ghana, they made a law. The police said anybody who gives any prophecy that can frighten must be arrested. And that is Ghana. <laughs> Ghana is next door to Nigeria. <laughs> the elders have been saying, <laughs> If you don't know the meaning of that, I do. If you don't give your life to Jesus Christ soon, and I mean very, very soon, God have mercy on you. This year is going to be a year of wonders. But there are two kinds of wonders. Two kinds. Good and bad. When a woman who is 90 something years old gives birth to a child, that's a wonder. When a king became an animal, that's a wonder. Which one do you want? If you want to give your life to Jesus Christ, I'm going to count from one to five. Come to the altar. We pray for your salvation. And then we get you out of the way and the rest of us can then go ahead and praise God like we ought to. So if you want to give your life to Jesus, come now as I'm counting. One. Two. This will be a very good day to give your life to Jesus at the very beginning of a new year. Come. The Lord wants to save your soul. God bless you. You're most welcome. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Three. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Four. The choice is yours. You can begin this year in a very wonderful way by surrendering your life to Jesus Christ. Hurry up, hurry up. The Lord is waiting for you. The Lord is waiting for you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Now, those of you who are already in front and anyone who may still be coming, talk to the Almighty God and say, Lord, just save my soul. I want to be in your family so that any danger that is ahead won't touch me at all. Save my soul. I will serve you. Forgive my sins. And I'm yours forever. The rest of us, let's stretch our hands towards our brothers and intercede for them. 
pray that the Almighty God who saved your soul will save their own souls also. Pray for them, intercede for them. Oh, thank you, my Father. Savior of mankind, these pure children have come. Have mercy on them. Have mercy on them. Please, Lord, Savior, look down from heaven and have mercy. Have mercy, Lord. Have mercy, Lord. Have mercy, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. My Father and my God, I just want to say thank you for your word. Thank you for this day that you, the Lord, have made. We bless your name for those who have come forward to surrender their life to you. Father, please receive them. Have mercy on them. Let your blood wash away their sins. Save their souls today. And write their names in the book of life. And let them remain yours forever. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. My Father, my God, I'm also committing all your children all over the world into your hands. As they will be praising you today. Lord God Almighty, please accept their praises. And as it is written that when praises go up, blessings will come down. The more they praise you, the more I request that you bless them in Jesus' name. And Lord God Almighty, when David said, what shall I render? What, what, shall, what can I do for God? He suddenly decided, I will build a house for God. My Father, my God, I pray that your children this year will build houses for you. So that we will build houses for them. Thank you, my Father, my God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Now, those of you who have come forward today, you are very special. The Lord says I should shake hands with you. of you uh, in front I promise you from now on I'll be praying for you the counselors will collect the information that I want your name, your address and your prayer request and they will pass it on to me and I promise I'll be praying for you but I want you to be around, I think we all want to shout and praise God for some minutes before the pastors take over. So anybody who can remember just one thing, one good thing that God did for you last year. Can, is anybody here who can remember? At least just one thing. The fact that at least I'm still breathing. The Bible says, let all that has breath praise the Lord. The, the fact that my vocal cord is still functioning. The, the fact that my memory is still working. If you can remember something great that God did for you last year, go ahead and praise him. Praise him. Praise him for just for five minutes. Give him glory. Give him honor. Give him adoration. Let, let him hear you. Praise him. Praise him this morning. 